we know the rhetoric. I mean, you just can't be opposed to change. We need uh, innovation and research that will develop the new high-yielding varieties that prevent a starving world, and uh, yeah. But uh, in the process, you lose all your biodiversity, you strip the farmers of all the collector of knowledge how to farm without the inputs, and left to their own values. UPOF 91 and the marketplace, they create a starving world. They don't save us from it, they lead us to it. I want to be completely clear about UPOF 91. The argument is, is that this is a system that we need in order to get innovative varieties. And uh, so uh, it's actually a creation that really uh, illustrates the inefficiency of private breeding systems because they're really bloody expensive. Uh, and so they want an assured revenue stream and they want mechanisms where they can uh, collect revenues, uh, not just on the seed, because when you plant seed, of course you produce a crop, and a crop is the multiplication of that seed, huge multiplication in every instance. And so they would prefer to be uh, collecting revenues on that multiplied seed, the crop, on an annual basis. Uh, and indeed, the Canadian Seed Trade Association is suggesting that that if Canada adopts UPOV 91, that it should be explicit in the, in the legislative changes that would be required to adopt it, that uh, farmers pay for that innovation for as long as that innovation is being used, rather than just the one-time buying of the variety, which has been characteristic up until this point. It's almost a cruel joke that companies more, the companies say they're real, they're very much free enterprise companies, yet the, the, the seed patent rights now, apparently they can get a, a patent on, on a chemical or a seed 15 years, they want it for 20 years. Well, how is that free trade? That's the, con that's the contrary of free trade. All the freedom, as a farmer, I'm supposed to compete with one another, but this is the total opposite of free. This is not free trade, and like if they say, and the seed ain't going to be very free. Now, now, so, so this is ridiculous. They, they want protection. They, they, if they don't like marketing boards because marketing boards give farmers security and certainty and all that stuff. And, 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 and yet that's what they want for themselves. Ultimately, what we're doing is giving up our sovereignty over seeds and, and over food. And uh, what the NFU is about and, and, and many of the people are now talking about is food sovereignty. And, and, you know, that's control of the food system, the production of food in, in a culturally appropriate way that uh, benefits, uh, uh, that's nutritionally sound, that benefits citizens and, and those people that produce the food. And these mechanisms aren't about any of that. Uh, they're indifferent about the quality of the food. It's about maximizing the revenue extraction and, uh, and uh, whatever baloney they tell us about innovation, it, it's not about that. It's not about that at all. It's about extraction. Larger major corporations uh, are now controlling the, the plant breeding in a private system and that has a consequence on the data trading, as a consequence on the confidence that I have in that, in that resulting uh, seed that might come out of those corporations. I have more confidence in a, in a public uh, uh, traded uh, public developed plant variety than I would in a private developed plant variety. What's happened with intellectual property rights and the, the monopoly power that the seed companies have achieved is just a constriction of exchange and a drying up of an exchange and nothing gets exchanged anymore between breeders uh, and that isn't accompanied by a materials transfer agreement. That's what the plant breeders that I'm working with are frustrated about too. We can't do what our jobs are. We can't be creative. We can't breed. That's what UPOF 91 is about. It's transferring wealth that is public wealth. Agriculture is a public resource. It's a public wealth. And we're going to transfer a portion of that wealth to the private sector. And we are told, of course, that they're going to prevent a starving world. No, no. That's not what they're going to do. Left the marketplace, left to apply its own values to the food production system will undoubtedly cause a starving world. Because the marketplace does not respect history. The marketplace does not have a long 
long-term plan. The marketplace will remove the biodiversity. The marketplace will remove the collective knowledge of farmers around the world and place their own system and make it vulnerable to collapse.